Frazetta's work is legendary. He's known as the godfather of fantasy art, the king of illustrators with epic works of historical importance. <laughs> That's not intimidating, eh? But not to worry, even if you've never done a master's study or are newer to drawing with pen and ink, today I share six tips that can ease you right into it, stress-free. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and more on that later. With a Frazetta study, the first step is deciding which piece to do. Even if you're keen for a challenge, as an artist, there's always that anxious little voice that says, Ooh, what if you make a mistake? Which means it's best to pick something that is challenging, yet feels like it's doable, within reach. In this case, we have three lovely pen and ink drawings I found on the Frazetta Girls website. I sketched a rough thumbnail of each one, and just by doing this quick exercise, you can immediately get an idea for which composition might feel more natural to you. Once I have a potential doable piece, I do a test run. Whichever section of the drawing looks most complex, I trace that with a fine liner pen. While tracing it, I very seriously assess how the master inked this piece because I want to learn from it and later apply it to my work. But most importantly, I want to understand the piece. If I can't figure out his intentions, then this masterwork is too advanced for my capabilities, not a good fit for my objectives. If that were the case, then we save time and grief at this stage and look for a more suitable piece before going any further. To evaluate what I'm getting into, basically a reality check, I take note of the key things about this piece. Source of light. It appears to be coming from the bottom, just below eye level, glowing upwards like from a fire in a cave. With the beast casting shadows, giving us solid blacks, which means I'll need to use a brush. It's not my strength, but I, I can manage. Then I look at how he did the shading and hatching. And there it is, the crux of our problem. He's not using any holding lines, no contours around the shapes. He's using a technique called shadow shape and form lighting with halo reflections. For example, look at the spear. You see on the highlight side of the edge, it's implied by juxtaposed values from the shapes next to it. The forms are defined by their shadow with the line direction, just like Franklin Booth and Bernie Wrightson would do. Okay. We've identified the danger zones. I'm not anxious yet. I'm still excited about it. We just need a strategy to stay safe. With ink, we sort of only get one chance, but I believe that if I can get the same values and transition tones that Frazetta used, that even if my technique is not at his high level, that my master study will be a success. If you'd like a template with those guiding questions that I just used, you'll find a link to my master study checklist down below. About our strategy, so let's have a look at the values arrangement. We'll map it out. First, we need a chart scaled from a one to five. Then we basically do a paint by numbers diagram with the tones as our guideline. And you see the genius of Frazetta. Look at the values arrangement. The focal point goes directly to the main character and his value is number one. He's framed by a negative space and the forefront and background are a number two, which gives us near and far atmospheric perspective. The middle plane is a number three so it'll be important that the second ape man and the second prisoner are rendered with similar tonal density. And the beast, oh, it's mostly number four and number five. Now that we know that Frazetta sandwiched the values this way, we can advance to the underdrawing. Usually I draw minimal information because I want to keep the bristle paper clean for the ink application. In this case, because of the tricky shadow shapes and form highlights that we identified, I needed more details, like here, the ape man's face. I drew it out for precise navigation of where to lay down the ink. But for other spots, like here, for the main character's knee, I drew no details, only the boundary lines to define transitions of values. It's comparable to landmarks on a topography to signal a change of terrain. By the way, if you tend to draw everything out, and maybe you don't need to, and drawing just the boundary lines is something you'd like to try more of, here's the exercise that's helped me the most to get better at this method. You start with a sphere, 
draw boundary lines to indicate the value change. The goal is to eventually go straight to ink from here. The middle step is to pencil in the shading before you ink. Practicing this method with progressively more complex shapes is a great way to accelerate your inking skills. As you can see also there's no holding lines just like the technique used by Master Frazetta. For other tips on how to progress with your art goals, that's something today's sponsor can help with. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes on a wide variety of topics for creative people like us. Not sure where to start? Skillshare designed learning paths to help you get from novice to pro and stay motivated to reach your goals. And based on those goals, you can save time searching because learning paths are hand-picked classes meant to be taken in order and they build on one another to help reinforce the learnings. You can take them based on your experience level in the category of your choice. Plus you'd be surprised how many high profile artists are teachers on this platform. I was delighted to land on a pen and ink drawing class by master artist Yuko Shimizu as part of my learning path. I really appreciated Yuko's comprehensive overview of types of inking brushes and how they render with different combinations of materials and you can take that class right now for free i'm happy to share this offer with you the first 500 people will get access to 30 days free trial membership by using my link in the description below now back to our drawing i did take quite a long time for the under drawing although i applied myself i realized some of the nuances of the anatomy might be lost Human anatomy is something of a mystery to me. <laughs> I've gone ahead with the ink application starting top down, left to right, and working in sections. Where you begin depends on the composition and personal preference. Sometimes it's best to start with the eye and face of a subject and work outwards from there. Or start from the foreground and move front to back of the picture plane. What you don't want to do with this piece is start with an outline of all the elements because we've already established Frazetta doesn't use contour lines. So definitely we need to work the drawing systematically by square inch as though we're weaving a cloth. I'm using India ink with a Hunt 101 Imperial nib because it makes soft lines that marry well with brush strokes. With the slightest pressure, you can go from thin hairline to bold in a single stroke. An alternative to these inking tools are fine liner pens. Use sizes 1 to 5 coupled with a brush pen or a large tip pen for the sections of solid black. Here I'm using a size 0 watercolor brush. While I have the brush out, it might be tempting to go ahead and fill in all the solids at once on the picture plane. But that would put us in the danger zone. We need to stick to the plan. Remember the crux we identified during their reality check phase? Our mission is accurate execution of the values range. Therefore, we're not exploring potential shortcuts. We follow directions of our navigation plan, the values by number map, one area at the time. We can add, but we can't subtract the ink once it's committed to the surface, so let's stay on track. Now have a look at this here. Rosetta strokes on the creature's wing, they feel like organized chaos. Or I should say, they're more organic. I can't replicate an exact copy, but I can follow general cues as far as the stroke direction goes. As long as we're in the right values range, we will reach our destination. If I get to a section where I feel lost and doubt starts to creep in, then I can always add a few pencil marks as confidence markers to find my way back. With the beast complete, I move to the characters. Still working from left to right because I'm right-handed, it's a precaution to avoid smudging as the ink dries. If you've not seen The Fantastic World of Frank Frazetta, it's an art book that came out in November of 2022. It's on my wish list. I've seen reviews on other channels that show many sketches and illustrations that make this book valuable for pen and ink enthusiasts. I switched to a Hunt 102 Croquel. It's a finer version of the 101 I was using before in terms of the flex and bounce. If you're curious about nib ratings, 
You'll find links to the tools and resources discussed in this video in the description below. Now I'm shading around the forms of the anatomy. Checking my value grades of the main character where his arm and leg overlap prisoner number two and the tricky shape shadow from his legs. Although they're buckling as, as he's being pulled forward. On the arm, I build tone with careful cross hatching. With the leg, there's a lot of black surface to fill. For that reason, I trade the dip pen for a brush to ink the solids for the legs. And it makes sense to extend the black for the cast shadow on the floor. But before doing that, check out the strands of fur from the ape man's forearm. They reverse white from black on the flooring, and therefore I've quickly outlined those to prepare the brushwork. I went ahead and rendered ape man in the forefront, where, where we said value range was a 1 and a 2. His tunic is nearly white from direct light, giving it the illusion of fading towards the viewer. The next challenging section is keeping Ape Man number 2 within the same tonal value as Prisoner number 2, whom are on the same plane. There's a few areas of solid black on Ape Man number 2, which moves the tone up a scale on the chart from a 3 to a 4.5. But thanks to having stuck to the plan, it's now easy to bump up the tone on Prisoner 2 in the desired areas. Had we gone too dark from the start, then it would affect the whole composition and take us off track. With the background complete, I let the ink dry, erase the last of the pencil marks, then assess the quality of the tones. We've reached the appropriate timing to smooth transitions from light to dark in some of the shadow areas, such as prisoner number two's arm, torso, and legs. Perhaps you noticed that I took minor liberties with the hatching style here and there, though I also did my best to honor the intent of the original work. I hope this demonstration encouraged you to study the masters, especially the ones you view as historically important like Frank Frazetta. By picking a doable piece and subsequently doing a test run, it allows our subconscious mind to accept that the art is achievable, to confirm that it's within our capability to do it well, a reality check identifies potential danger zones, which gives us the data we need to devise a strategy to then overcome each problem. The landmarks we've established protect us from the temptation to look for shortcuts while sticking to our plan takes us to the final destination. The general idea is to draw within our capability while striving to make gains one objective at the time. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and if you enjoyed today's master study, I'd appreciate you taking a second to give it a like and subscribing. Thank you and catch you in the next one.